Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Um, welcome to our webinar, Systems and Understanding Lessons Across USAID's Sustainable WASH Systems Learning Partnership. My name is Brittany Ajrud. I'm the Chief of Party for SWS. We have a few minutes before we formally kick off, uh, but we do want to ask those of you who have joined early uh, to please take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, you could please list your name, affiliation, and what brings you here today. Again, I just want to welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, please take a moment as we're waiting for the full group to arrive to just quickly introduce yourself in the event chat. That's the speech bubble icon on the right side of your screen. Um, and we'd love to hear just your name, what organization you're affiliated with, and then what brings you here today, or maybe a question that you're hoping to hear um, answered. Welcome. Hey, welcome Wubi from Ethiopia and Paul. Welcome Frank from the UK. Looks like we've had a few more people join us. We're still um, going to give it a minute before we officially kick things off. But for those of you who are in the room, please uh, take a moment to introduce yourselves in the event chat. Uh, you can list your name, organization, and what brings you here today. Welcome Jeff, who will be one of our main presenters, calling in from Tacoma, Washington. So it looks like people are interesting, interested to hear about some of the tools that we used. Um, Some, exam some hearing from some people who have applied uh, systems approaches in other countries and other projects. Welcome to our webinar. Very excited to have you here. Welcome Savat Savanarith from Cambodia, working on monitoring and evaluation. Okay. We are at the hour, so I'm gonna go ahead and get things kicked off uh, as people continue to trickle in. Um, so welcome everyone. I guess a final call to please introduce yourself in the chat, listing your name, organization, and what brings you here today. We can go ahead and advance to the next slide. Okay, so welcome to this webinar, uh, Systems and Understanding Lessons Across USAID's Sustainable WASH Systems Learning Partnership. My name is Brittany Ajrud and I'm the Chief of Party for SWS. Thank you so much for joining us for this discussion on findings from a study to investigate changes and in how stakeholders conceptualized factors 
that influence wash service delivery throughout the five year duration of this project. I'd like to briefly orient you to the Blue Jeans events platform uh, to ensure that you can fully participate in today's session. The main controls are located along the right of your screen and you can see what each button does on this slide. Please reach out to our team via the moderator chat if you're experiencing issues with the Blue Jeans platform at any point. The settings tab at the bottom is where you can adjust your output device and turn on closed captioning. Closed captioning is also available by clicking on the CC button in the bottom left of your screen. If you would like to adjust the proportion of the screen that shows the slides versus the presenter's video, use the slider along the bottom of your screen. And finally, the chat is open. So uh, again, please introduce yourself if you haven't already, and we look forward to your comments and questions throughout the presentation. For today's agenda, we'll begin with a brief overview of SWS, followed by, by some background on SWS research on stakeholder understanding. We'll then dive into the analysis and results of this research, and we'll bring in two colleagues from Ethiopia to share their experiences putting this into practice. We'll wrap up the session with approximately 15 minutes of Q&A, followed by some concluding remarks from our AOR, Ryan Mahoney. Uh, it is now my great pleasure to hand it over to Dr. Emily Bondank from USAID to kick things off. Uh, Emily is a science and technology policy fellow serving as a WASH advisor in the Center for Water Security, Sanitation, and Hygiene. She has six years of experience in the water sector and previously conducted research on climate resilient water infrastructure at Arizona State University. Over to you, Emily. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Brittany, for that introduction. Um, so I'll provide a little bit of overview of of what the Sustainable WASH Systems Learning Partnership is overall. Um, so under the Sustainable WASH Systems Learning Partnership, or SWS as we'll refer to it throughout the um, presentation, eight partners are working with USAID to test new ideas, approaches, and tools to strengthen local WASH systems in order to improve service sustainability. We start with the premise that strengthening a local system means engaging with the actors in that system and also understanding and addressing key factors such as financing that can help or inhibit sustainability. At the same time, SWS partners are working in partnership with local stakeholders to apply and test new solutions to sustaining WASH services. Through this partnership, we are working to better understand how people understand and engage with systems, how we can apply collaborative approaches to reach solutions, and how professionalizing maintenance services can help to solve the rural, rural water sustainability challenge. Today's webinar will focus specifically on how stakeholder understanding has shifted through the learning activities the SWS team has led in different communities around the world. Stakeholder understanding is an important topic for us at USAID as it cuts across many of our rural water research agenda questions and is especially critical for questions around identifying which systemic factors support the professionalization of rural water service delivery. So now I'll share a bit about um, the study regions of SWS. SWS is working within seven different regional contexts in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Uganda. Um, the study you are about to see compiles learning across these seven regions. So now I'll hand this over to Jeff Walters to begin our discussion on this research. Over to you, Jeff. Thanks, Emily. My name is Jeff Walters. Um, I'm a faculty member at the University of Washington, Tacoma. Um, and I'll be joined by my colleague and co-founder at Open Water Systems, Nick Falcourt. Um, truly, it's been an immense pleasure working with so many great people within the SWS Learning. We're really excited to be at a point after five years of hard work, our research findings on the important theme of how stakeholders conceptualize the complex systems that influence full WASH service delivery. I would first like to provide a brief overview of how the research we, research we did on stakeholder understanding fits within the larger portfolio of research within SWS. 
The SWS Learning Partnership proposed the theory of change, that, which states that systems strengthening be done more effectively once all involved stakeholders have a better understanding of the interconnected factors that influence service sustainability. Our research aimed to evaluate if and how systems level understanding was shifting during the five-year SWS project duration. We're going to discuss the shifts in stakeholder understanding we saw in this study during this webinar. With the help of two case studies presented by our in-country partners, Betty and Desta from IRC Ethiopia, we will also discuss how these shifts in understanding appeared to be influencing the actions stakeholders took to improve WASH. As well as discussing how potential stakeholder engagement activities may have resulted in these shifts in understanding. Before we get started discussing our research findings, we want to make sure it's clear what we mean when we say the term stakeholder understanding. For the purpose of our work, stakeholder understanding was defined as how stakeholders conceptualize the factors that drive WASH service delivery, the interaction between these factors, and how that conceptualization of factor interactions shifts over time. It's also important to note where these shifts in understanding are potentially coming from. Uh, this image shows how SWS used a suite of systems and approaches to help stakeholders gain understanding about local WASH systems. These activities and tools were divided within three approach areas. First, approaches for understanding WASH systems components, such as asset inventories, life cycle cost analyses, and learning visits. Second, our approaches for analyzing and strengthening systems, such as network analysis and systems mapping. And lastly, approaches for measuring systems change, such as outcome mapping and scorecards. Now we'd like to take a few moments to explain the research method that we use to evaluate how stakeholder understanding of factor interactions appeared to be changing throughout the SWS project timeline. With the invaluable support, of our in-country partners, we interviewed water and sanitation stakeholders and asked them questions related to the challenges and solutions to sustainable wash service delivery. Interviews were transcribed and then analyzed using a process called uh, purposive text analysis to identify causal statements like the one you see here, where a stakeholder indica indicates cause and effect relationships between factors. So for example, here the interview E mentioned three factors and two interactions where service performance influences willingness to pay, which in turn influences operation and maintenance. By conducting numerous interviews at the beginning, middle, and end of the project, we were able to perform a quantitative assessment of shifts in understanding for stakeholder coalitions by evaluating the frequency that certain factors were mentioned within causal statements at different time steps. Over the duration of this research across the seven study regions, our SWS partners interviewed over 200 stakeholders. The majority of the interviewee, interviewer, interviews were with government officials, but also included NGOs, service providers, uh, service users, and academics. These interviews produced over 1,000 pages of transcribed text, for which we identified 3,600 causal statements, resulting in roughly 270 unique factors which were then grouped into 17 cross-case factors that we used to compare and contrast shifts in understanding across the study regions. Overall, a very broad, deep, and rich data set through which to evaluate stakeholder understanding. I'll hand this over now to Nick Falcourt to discuss some of the study findings. Great, thanks, Jeff. Uh, in this next section, we're going to focus on three of the main thematic findings that emerge from the stakeholder understanding analysis. First one is stakeholders' conceptualization of complexity. The second is a shift towards a service delivery approach. And the third is the influence of turnover on stakeholder understanding. As was mentioned previously, we identified 273 unique factors from the interview transcripts. We then group these factors into 17 cross-case categories seen here at the top of the page in order to compare results across the seven study regions. We then wanted to look at how references to these factors and the interactions between them changed over time. 
What we found in a majority of the study regions was an overall increase in the number of factors that each stakeholder mentioned at the end line as compared to the baseline. We saw a similar increase in the number of interactions that each stakeholder identified between these factors as well. We believe that this points to stakeholders' enhanced conceptualization of the complexity of WASH services that resulted from SWS partners engaging these stakeholders in facilitated discussions where participants were encouraged to consider a wider range of components within the local WASH system and how they affect one. Next, let's look at our second finding, which we've called a shift towards a service delivery approach. This figure here shows the number of references to our 17 cross case factors as a solution to service sustainability uh, across all of the seven study regions from the baseline interviews uh, shown in light gray to the end line interviews in blue. Here, the length of the line between the two points represents the size of the shift in the number of references to each factor within a causal state. The graph is also sorted from the most to least mentioned factors from the top to the bottom. The first thing we see is that operation maintenance was overall the most frequently mentioned factor at the end line, where it experienced a slight increase as the third most mentioned factor at the baseline. Going down the chart, we see decreases in the number of references to government and external finance and the role of community and users, again, as solutions to service sustainability. Conversely, we see increases in the number of references to the private sector, government management, and planning factors. So what does all this mean? Overall, these shifts align with what can broadly be referred to as a service delivery approach, where decision makers begin to focus more on factors for sustaining services and move away from the traditional emphasis on hardware and management. Considering the size of these shifts across more than 200 key informant interviews and seven study regions, we believe this indicates that the systems-focused approaches that SWS partners implemented have genuinely shifted the way in which local stakeholders are thinking about the factors that are necessary for sustainable service tools. For our last finding, we connected with the collection action team at SWS. If any of the components of collaboration that they were investigating appeared to be correlated with stakeholder understanding, we narrowed in on five potential drivers of collaboration, including starting point, coalition age, member turnover, existence of a work plan, and types of external funding. There's more information on these conditions in the flagship report on collective action within SWS, which the moderators will share uh, a link to in the chat. So what we found after looking at all these conditions is that the influence of turnover appeared to have the strongest effect on understanding. Here the analysis showed us that for coalitions who reported having low or manageable turnover, Alignment on factors for success increased by 32%, whereas in coalitions that had unmanageable turnover, alignment actually decreased by 17%. In this case, we measured alignment as the total variance in the number of references to each factor by individual stakeholders within each study region, and then we compare these values at the baseline and the end line. What we think this shows is something that many people already know, but haven't necessarily been able to quantify. And that is that turnover has a significant impact on getting everyone on the same page and reducing turnover can not only promote alignment on key issues, but also help government service providers and other stakeholders make more informed collective decisions to improve service sustainability. Well, now that we've explored some of the shifts that occurred across the SWS study regions, next we're gonna look at two cases in particular from the perspectives of the coalition's facilitators. Desta Dimsa is a specialist in rural and urban wash with over 25 years of experience in natural resource management, food security, and the Ethiopian wash sector. Betty Hayorgas is a research and system strengthening officer with IRC Wash and has been a focal learning person for SWS since the partnership's inception. We're gonna focus on two examples from SWS's work in Ethiopia, where a learning alliance approach helped to improve stakeholders' understanding of the local WASH system. In the city of Deborah Bahan, 
DESTA and Tetra Tech were convening partners to improve urban sanitation service delivery, whereas in the South Ari Moreta, Betty and IRC WASH were taking a similar but slightly different approach for strengthening rural and small town water service. First, Desta and Betty are going to tell us about some of the activities that were conducted in each context to help improve stakeholders' understanding of the system. In Dabrabram, April 2018 baseline data collection was conducted in collaboration with town wide sector stakeholders. SWS used sanitation cityscape approach to design and frame the baseline and the end analysis. The cityscape approach tracks indicators across three different urban environments, namely the pre-domestic living environment, service delivery environment, and the enabling environment. Establishing and facilitating learning alliance. Learning Alliance became the foundational platform for projects to engage with local actors and for local actors to engage with each other. Learning Alliance provides the forum to validate the baseline, endline, develop a shared vision, and identify priority area focus areas. Three, building Learning Alliance members' capacity. Working closely with the Learning Alliance, SWS identified technical collaboration and management capacity needs and providing training for Learning Alliance decision makers and community representatives to address knowledge and the skill gaps. Or improving coordination and communication. With the support of SWS, Learning Alliance identified communication and coordination barriers and took a step to resolve them. These are some of the activities to improve stakeholder understanding. We conducted several baseline assessments in collaboration with South Ari Water Office. The assessments included Asset Inventory and Service Level Assessment, LCCA, Sustainability Check, Network Analysis, and Factor Analysis, with a synthesis report using the Building Block Assessment. This supported the WERDA to understand their status and paved the way for establishment of the learning alliances. For process documentation, we used three different approaches. The Learning Alliance meeting reports to summarize the, the discussions and decisions in the meetings. The facilitator's diary to capture events and activities between the Learning Alliance meetings and st stakeholder understanding interviews conducted annually. The stakeholder understanding interviews were used to learn about understanding of local wash systems, documenting the understanding and experience of Learning Alliance members and the progress so far. These also were intended to help reflect on what needs to be changed and what should happen and incorporate findings in the annual plans. Next, we're going to hear about some of the ways that uh, Desta and Betty measured shifts in understanding over the course of the project. SWS conducted semi-annual system understanding interviews with selected members of the Learning Alliance and triangulated the results with observation. The biannual system understanding survey aims to evaluate Learning Alliance sanitation system understanding. The survey or contained four open-ended questions to understand the knowledge of Learning Alliance members through major changes in understanding of town sanitation systems. We used rubric rating system to measure performance of stakeholder system understanding. These are some of the things we used to measure shifts in stakeholder understanding. Analysis of stakeholder understanding interview responses using a rubric and comparing shifts in understanding with previous year. We asked five questions to 10 Learning Alliance members annually. The questions covered significant changes in the year and the role of the Learning Alliance, most useful activities, the action research and their progress, and overall reflection. The rubric had three components that are scored from zero to three. The components are description of change, discussion of overall water systems, and description of the Learning Alliance and its activities. The scores are then compared annually if we find the same person to interview. We tried to get the same person every year, which was a bit difficult because of high turnover. In addition to this, we used baseline, midline, and endline building block assessments to understand change in the system. 
Now we're going to hear about what types of shifts in understanding were observed in De Deborah Brahan and South Ari. The main shifts in stakeholder system understanding were one, attention paid for sanitation component. Learning Alliance members acknowledge the water being prioritized over sanitation by residents and the stakeholder decision makers was a barrier and identified the role and agency in improving the sanitation system. Second, sanitation planning and intervention prioritized. Deborah Brand do not have updated municipal plans guiding their sanitation strategies and priorities. Learning Alliance reached consensus on feasible and priority focus area through their work on baseline survey, thereby improving the management of communal latrines and building consensus on fecals like disposal sites. Third, resource allocated for sanitation. Financing for sanitation, usually for infrastructure, is widely perceived by actors as a barrier that is difficult to overcome. Over time, Learning Alliance members successfully advocate for increased allocation in municipal budgets from the town on revenue, federal government transfer, and donors' assistance. Fourth, enhanced stakeholder system understanding. Learning Alliance engaged in reviewing and validating the baseline findings allowed them to buy in and eventually take ownership of the design and implementation of activities to improve sanitation services. SWS conducted semi-annual system understanding interview with selected members of the Learning Alliance and triangulated the results with observations, which lead in revising and identifying relevant stakeholder representation in Learning Alliance, prioritizing sanitation planning, and sanitation financing. These are some of the shifts in stakeholder understanding. The way the word as staff talks about water systems has shifted significantly. This is also seen in better resource allocation for different components of the system. For example, a response from the endline stakeholder understanding interview goes like this. There is a change in awareness in the community. The community is willing to pay for water and the water user associations collect additional money. There is also better perception for water services at administration level. Finance office used to say no to urgent maintenance. Now they are open and happy to help. Finance office also hired two professionals for water the water office. There is good experience on water stream construction with community mobilization from two cabalists. The development of the Warada Wash SDG master plan helped with having proper data and clear vision. We now have evidence to show to Warada cabinet. There is still limited capital budget with a cash flow problem even when budget has been allocated. This year, we have written a proposal to move fast through the procurement process during game construction. There is also better understanding on the need for collaboration, learning, and problem solving. Finally, Desta and Betty are going to share with us some of the actions that resulted from these changes. As a result of system understanding, Learning Alliance developed annual action plan from 2018 to 2021, which outlined interventions, roles, and responsibility to address sanitation challenges. The planned intervention focuses on consensus building around fecal slide disposal sites, a monitoring system for communal and public latrines to ensure accountability and inform decision making for planning and budgeting, human capacity building to address skills and the knowledge gaps. Second, increased budget allocation for sanitation. One of the most significant achievements came about through working with the Learning Alliance to advocate for annual increase in sanitation funding. After years of not prioritizing sanitation, the town administration and the private actors mobilized funds for procurement of land, development of fecal sludge dumping site, and the construction of shared latrines. Town wash sector stakeholders also increased their allocation for sanitation by 27% from 2019 to 2020 and 56% from 2020 to 2021. Here are some of the actions due to the shift in stakeholder understanding. The Learning Alliance decided to develop Warada Wash SDG master plans with support from IRC. This showed that the Warada understood the need for evidence-based planning for implementation and resource mobilization. 
In the most recent Learning Alliance meeting, the members decided to sustain the Learning Alliances by taking responsibility of coordination and facilitation, which was the responsibility of SCWS for the past four years. Awesome. Uh, thanks to both Betty and Desta for explaining how their teams thought to improve, measure, and evaluate how water service stakeholders understand local WASH system. I would like to take a few moments to summarize a few sector recommendations that emerged from the study and the experiences of our in-country partners. So, in summary, we believe that this study showed how SWS partners we're able to shift understanding on key WASH system components, as well as demonstrated, it also demonstrated the value of investing in approaches that focus on stakeholder understanding. Specifically, we found that convening stakeholders in a structured setting to discuss WASH service delivery strategies proves their understanding of WASH system interconnections, aligns this knowledge, forms action. Additionally, it's very important to note that retaining stakeholders is key to promoting more complete and aligned understanding on WASH systems. Finally, Desta and Betty showed us that measuring systems understanding does not necessarily need to follow the same time-intensive, rigorous process that we employed in our research. Instead, this can be done using lighter touch approaches such as focus groups, surveys, and observations. Now we're going to transition to our Q&A session moderated by Emily Bondak. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and thanks for the excellent presentation, SWS team. So now we're going to open it up for Q&A. Um, we have been receiving some questions in the chat already, but please start adding those more and more. Um, we have a good amount of time for Q&A, so we'll get to a lot of them. Um, I'm going to start with questions that haven't already been answered in the Q&A chat. Some, some of our SWS team has been already answering some. But I'll start with this question from Rebecca Giannotti around defining understanding. The question is, if you're trying to measure how much each stakeholder improved in their understanding, that implies that you already have in mind what the ultimate goal is i.e. you've already defined a priori what the correct understanding should be, and you're kind of grading the stakeholders against your definition. Is that a correct interpretation of this work? If so, how did you come up with a definition of understanding that stakeholders should ultimately achieve? So who would like to take that question? It's an important one. Here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take it real quick, Emily. Um, great question. So something we, we uh, didn't mention in our presentation is that the way we came about these results is we at first looked at findings within each of those seven study regions. And all the results that we shared with you today um, were aggregated uh, from those together. So instead of defining what we thought an improvement in understanding was, we simply just looked at the results that we were getting based on the purpose of text coding methodology that uh, Jeff presented and uh, looked at these shifts and we shared them with uh, the learning coordinator in each one of these contexts. So Betty helped us with that for Stathari, Desta, and Deborah Brahan, and then we also had, we had five other partners who reviewed those findings with us. And so we ground truthed what those shifts were representing. And so the aggregation that we're showing you here today is, is based on uh, numerous memos and feedback interviews that we did uh, with all of the learning coordinators to make sure that what we're seeing in this data was actually reflected in reality. So to answer the question, we, we didn't have a preconception of what improvement meant. Uh, instead, we were just looking at what was changing. And after talking with all of our partners, when we looked at those shifts, what we heard from them was that what they thought was changing was this move towards service delivery um, and, a, and away from hardware and away from sort of traditional focus. So it came from the data, but it's also backed up by uh, the experiences and the perspectives of all of our, uh, our learning coordinators within each region. 
But Rebecca, also, to be fair, I mean, we would see this as as an improvement. And I think you, we, we mentioned in a previous uh, discussion uh, that we we saw this as an improvement and, and actually we're really excited to see this. So, so you're right in mentioning uh, that it does seem a little bit as if we're sort of cherry picking, um, but we did start at it from a very sort of emergent out, uh, outcome perspective where we wanted to see just what, what was shifting because we wanted to step away from perception on understanding, actually asking stakeholders what they, if they thought their understanding was going to a more emergent sort of inference of understanding how that shifted. Um, and so that's what this approach by design tried to do? That's a really good question. Great, I think that answered it, but Rebecca, please put in the chat if you had a follow-up question on that. Um, I have a question coming in from Betty and Desta. What are some of the challenges to stakeholder or to building stakeholder understanding within coalitions? Can I go first? Yeah, uh, to make the stakeholder understanding, you see, uh, we are working at the ground level. Uh, we start uh, to implement our projects and make a survey at the beginning, and we identify uh, the stakeholder understanding the skill and the knowledge and the attitude what they have. Uh, in their mind about the urban sanitation. I'm talking from the urban sanitation point of view. So as I present, uh, always uh, water is prioritized over sanitation and sanitation is also a cross cutting. It is go in different uh, sectors, not managed by one organization. Some organize, some leg is in water, some leg is in health, some leg is in the municipality. So, those people that are not really show or prioritize the sanitation. And based on that findings, we try to make how that sanitation is important and building their capacity, taking them to different places to show how other stakeholders or similar towns are working on sanitation. So over time, they are acknowledge their understanding, okay, how it's important. And even if we are doing better in different sector, and if we are not including sanitation in that uh, development, the thing what the stakeholder or the government or the NGOs is doing is not complete. Because of that, those uh, stakeholders are understanding how sanitation is important and how they want to uh, just support the sanitation by allocating, by identifying, by listening, and even adv advocating for the sanitation. So that is uh, the main point. We make them, show them to bring different, different country experience, different sector uh, experience, how they're working, and to uh, uh, just uh, prioritize the sanitation. So. It is not happen overnight. It is a cumulative procedure and starting from the beginning up to the end of the project. And we observe that the stakeholder well understood and start to reflect on the sanitation and even prioritizing. I'm talking, I'm talking about the Deborah Abraham. Leave alone the government, even the private sector is generating or contributing a lot of amount of money to uh, support the construction of fecal slide dumping site. Again, the community, the NGO, the governments are building the shared latrine and hand over to them, and the communities are not really well managed that their own uh, facilities. But building their capacity, showing how to manage, discussing with them, and finally, they start to generate or collecting the fee, opening the uh, uh, book account and recruiting the services for different uh, services like impeding, like uh, uh, maintenance or something like that. So we are really showing and uh, bringing the stakeholder understanding by different components of the project. Thank you. 
you, Desta. I'm hearing it. It takes some time. Uh, can't expect change overnight. Betty, um, would you like to comment on some of the challenges you've seen in building stakeholder understanding in your coalition? Yeah, sure. Uh, so for us, the main challenge, especially in South RE, was the high turn turnover at the management level. So uh, we have seen from our results that there is a better shift in understanding with uh, experts. But when management changes or when there is turn turnover, there is some kind of setback in the overall process. So to try to alleviate that, we tried to get some the same person from each organization to attend the Learning Alliance events, but uh, that's also another challenge we faced during this process. Uh, we also asked the WERDA sector offices to uh, assign focal persons to participate in these Learning Alliance activities, and that helped in changing or shifting the understanding of the experts, but still there is an issue with uh, management level stakeholder understanding, uh, systems understanding. Thank you. Um, I, I have a follow up question for you both, actually. Um, did you manage to document resistance to change from the various stakeholders? And um, if you need clarification, maybe Nick, you could come on and, and describe that a bit more. That was a question from Nick. <laughs> oh, sorry, it was coming from the chat. I, I think what people are asking about was, we're presenting results on what were generally beneficial uh, shifts, You know what we thought were uh, moving towards the types of things that um, you were both talking about in the Learning Alliances and promoting different approaches. But did you have participants in those learning alliances who were resistant to change or were maybe moving in the other direction saying we need to focus more on hardware or something else? Did you have any instances of that? Yeah, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, from the history, if we are talking about the soft component, even this, our project is almost a soft component. And the government, the community, everybody are very happy to have the hardware component. So this is a research project. This is to measuring the knowledge, the attitude of the stakeholder, working together and bringing different stakeholders on board. Some of the learning alliance, yes, they are uh, challenging us. Okay, you are doing the research, you are doing the assessment, presenting your assessment. So what? So still, this is a key challenge. And uh, what I'm feeling is this is a project of the learning and uh, the research project. And if it is combined with hardware, it is balancing the interest of all learning, all learning alliance. So we are talking about the technical side and being side. We identify the issue, we discuss how it is useful, but due to the resource shortage, it is difficult for the Learning Alliance to implement immediately. But if the project is have the hardware component, easy to test and do again an actual research. When we are talking, are, are doing a actual research, that actual research also, we have to test with the result. So one wing is the result and a research and sometimes it is missed the action. So there is a resistance from the stakeholders. And finally, we try to convince them that it takes time. But still, yes, we have a problem for that. Thank you. Betty, would you like to comment? You don't have yeah. to. But <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think this is the main shift in understanding uh, that we've been talking about. So at the beginning, uh, when we started FWS, it's there is resistance, especially when uh, in Ethiopia, where most NGOs are working in infrastructure or in emergency areas. So there is some resistance, but you see the shift, even though it's small, 
during the learning the learning alliance as we uh, the learning alliance meetings or the other activities we do so at the beginning a person might talk about just infrastructure or service levels but we got three or four same people throughout the year and they started talking about for example maintenance operation and maintenance uh, capacity of the word uh, and things like that that is a major shift in understanding so there there was resistance there's still resistance but sh seeing that shift is i think some kind of encouragement for us wonderful Okay, I think now I'm going to ask a question that is open to the, the full group here from Hussein Nouri. I hope I pronounced that right. What are the technologies and enabling environment for systems and understanding? Maybe Nick or Jeff? Um, okay, well, I, I don't know if I can say what the technologies are. I think a lot of what, what we're sharing out in, in this project, the basis of it is a lot of conversations. It's a lot of the software. It's not the hardware. Um, across all of these, we keep calling them study regions, they're effectively coalitions. So in Deborah Bahan, South Ari, these are IRC's uh, Learning Alliance approach. Um, in Kitui County, in uh, Kenya, Kaburole in Uganda, and Muli in Uganda, um, they took a slightly different approach, but still getting people together to have conversations about the WASH system. That was sort of our technology intervention, if you will, was facilitated discussions. And uh, these were also alongside uh, changes uh, in monitoring systems, uh, producing changes in, in bylaws, uh, training mechanics, that there's a lot of other things that go along with this, but but uh, group discussions were sort of the main intervention have you, and that that we're looking at in in this um, in the stakeholder understanding work. And so I think that maybe that's one of the things that hopefully is is mainstreaming a little bit more in Wash and other sectors is that a lot of the the progress that needs to be made maybe is not on it's not on technological fronts, but it's more on building the understanding so that people see more of the system that's supporting services and understand which of those factors is um, is pushing the system towards a beneficial outcome. And so I'll just say, you know, even though we mentioned that we came out with 270 factors from uh, all of these interviews, we could generally put those factors into a few common categories. So people are talking about the same things everywhere. You know, the same uh, 17 categories of things need to exist everywhere but the way in which they are influencing one another and, and how important they are in each context is what is different in those contexts. So yeah, the short answer is I think our technology intervention is people listening, people talking and people listening. But I'll let Betty and Desta add on that if they want to. I guess I'll piggyback on that just a little bit. It's also, it's it's listening with an intent of Nick's point. Um, it's 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 discussing and trying to sort of ascertain how people are conceptualizing interaction. Both to look at maybe it'll give you a, a pulse for how the system is changing. You know these folks are are in are in intimately connected with the system, and so when they talk about the things that are influencing service delivery, for example, it gives you a good sense for what's actually happening. I know that seems pretty obvious, but, you know, kind of keeping your ear tuned to, uh, to interactions and how, and how interactions between factors or actors seem to be changing over time could be, could be useful in understanding how to, how to shift policy and shift action. Um, also, it potentially looks at, allows you to see um, alignment. It, it's really just, a, a, again, an understanding that understanding matters. <laughs> And that um, having a keen ear to that, to any shifts in understanding, could be very um, important on how on how policies are done and how and how actions are are done. So, um, but the technology really is quite simple. Um, again, we we did a process that we wanted to have this emerge, and it was a very rigorous and very time intensive process. But it doesn't have to be that way, and it just needs to be sort of almost a paradigm shift 
towards looking at understanding and, and, and that understanding on interactions matters. Awesome, thank you both. Okay, um, now for a question from Juliet Mwebesa. Um, she says, thank you for a great presentation. Um, in an attempt to mirror this learning alliance on a rural sanitation context, do you think we would have the same level of success with the outcomes on budget allocation, noting funding decisions are often made at the central or national level? And thank you. Yeah. Please what do you think? Yeah. Just repeat. Please repeat. The, yes, of course. Repeat. So, in an attempt to mirror this learning alliance um, on a rural sanitation context, do you think we would have the same level of success with the outcomes on budget allocation, noting funding decisions are made at a central national level, maybe perhaps at a different level than what the learning alliance is? Um, how could you achieve the same level of success in that kind of context? Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, when we are talking about uh, learning alliance and even about the budget, uh, it's a pity. Uh, always we are looking up from the national government or from the donors. But uh, due to uh, the learning alliance and different key stakeholders on board and we are really a remarkable uh, resource uh, the town and municipalities allocate for that so uh, in Deborah Brahan for the last three or four years even the budget is coming from only from the municipality for construction of the fecal slide dumping site but we bring different stakeholders like private sector, NGOs, university, even the user uh, uh, from the town and the discuss about the issue. Then the private sector, they allocate for the construction of fecal slide dumping site and road around 2.5 million Ethiopian per. I don't know how much it was uh, to uh, USID. Uh, it's easy to convert actually. So, come to the water utility. The water utility mandate is to provide a service, not constructing the fecal slide dumping site, the hardware. But due to the urgency and understanding the process, they allocate around more than a million Ethiopian per for construction of fecal dumping site. So, in, in previous, even there is a different budget coming from the donors like ULGDP budget for the town, and the town is allocating for the road construction, the cover, the ditch, and whatever. But in, for the last two years, they are allocating more than a million, three or uh, four million for the sanitation uh, components. So now the stakeholder, the town decision makers understand and start to prioritize, okay, sanitation is one of our responsibility and we have to allocate a resource for that. They make it. So the local government, if they are understanding very well how things is important, even they make a balance to allocate the resource for that. So we are very successful to with a learning alliance to generate, to advocate for uh, allocating the resources from the uh, municipality or the town administration. So I think there is a remarkable budget is uh, allocated from the town and even the budget coming from the federal and from the donors to the sanitation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and now I think for our final question, which will be directed towards everybody, um, if you've completed the research phase of the projects, what's next? Um, what are you doing now? Um, 
to build on the work you've already done. And can gain maybe a, I can a, start on this. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So since uh, it was a learning project, I think uh, the idea was to create evidence. So we have cr created some evidence in all the areas that there is a significant improvement or shift either in under stakeholder understanding, either in collaboration or maintenance activities. So by creating that evidence, now we can talk about scaling up or having the discussion at different levels of the, the country. For example, uh, we have a national level system strengthening uh, platform. So in that, we can discuss about, for example, tracking systems, uh, understanding change, during most of the projects that are happening in, in, in our districts. So it's all about taking the evidence beyond the districts and uh, looking beyond the project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our main object is to bring uh, our learning alliance as the optimum level and when the project is phased out or SWS is not there, they have to continue with the process what we have done for the last four or five years. So we present for our learning alliance as the end of the project, what was in the beginning and what was at the end of the project, and they show how significant change they bring. Our role was to facilitate, to bring the decision maker, to listen to them, to facilitate the process. So they very well understand and even we ask them whether they continue with the learning alliance to engage and to continue for the sustainability of the urban sanitation. Deborah Brown, they completely agree and they will continue to with the learning alliance. So based on that, based on that commitment, the water utilities, the municipalities, the health and the other organization, they sit together and develop a one-year budget to continue what was uh, activity with the project is providing for the last four or five years. So even they invite us, the first Learning Alliance meeting, it was uh, yesterday, so we show them, they understand they take forward and they start to uh, facilitate discussion and identify their own problem collectively and implement collectively. So we are uh, really proud of them. They will continue with such kind of process and just start to build up what the project is uh, providing for them. And both towns, they agree to continue with the uh, learning alliance to provide or to guide, to under, uh, understand, to identify their issues and act on collectively with the stakeholder of the towns. Thank you, Desta. Um, and note that uh, Jeff and Nick have provided responses to this question in the chat around what's uh, next for research. Um, and so now we'll close the Q&A session. Thank you everyone so much for your questions and thanks to our presenters for, for fielding them. Um, so now to close our meeting, we'll be having a few final words from Ryan Mahoney, a, a WASH advisor at USAID and currently the AOR for Sustainable WASH Systems. Over to you, Ryan. Great, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, I'm, yeah, the current, I'm AOR um, Manager for Sustainable Watch Systems, and I uh, just wanted to give some closing remarks before we close. And um, in general, I think, you know, we've seen over the past few weeks, especially with the, all the events and the closeout activities, um, that Sustainable Watch Systems has bridged many gaps across systems understanding, uh, professionalized maintenance, and uh, collective action overall. So, 
With that, you know, today we heard more about partner activities on improved stakeholder understanding and especially appreciating the complexity of the WASH system and how to align the understanding of actors and improve decision making in other actions. This is a pretty critical component of the WASH system, says since no actor can do it alone. So hopefully folks have uh, gained an appreciation for where they fit in the system and how to uh, hopefully influence uh, other stakeholders understanding in this system. So Emily explained, you know, also how this relates to our water and development strategy and uh, and as well, I'm sorry, as well as our water and development research agenda, uh, which many questions relate to how stakeholders interact um, in order to improve water, san water security, sanitation, uh, hygiene outcomes. With that, um, you know, I think we wanted to highlight a few of our flagship uh, resources on, on this uh, from this from this line of research so so if you want to learn more about the stakeholder understanding work under SWS uh, we have a lot lots of resources to share with you so uh, the first is uh, maybe the most importantly is our flagship report on stakeholder understanding which we'll um, putting a link to in the chat but uh, it's also you can find it on global waters on SWS's site within global waters and um, this summer so summarizes and goes into more deep detail the research presented in this webinar. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of brings out more of the quantitative side and as well as some anecdotes and boxes and things like that. Um, secondly, the other thing you can find is an interactive dashboard with some of the data collected as part of the study. I think it's a great example of kind of open data and um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I love I love playing around in this dashboard. Uh, you can it's a Tableau dashboard, so you can hover over and, and move uh, the data the data points around to understand better what the um, what the situation is. So um, yeah, uh, the last is our research article that explains this method used in the study in more detail. Um, as Jeff said, it was a there's a much more rigorous version of stakeholder understanding than um, many would, would carry out. But, um, you know, I think it shows the, the level of how um, rigorous the findings are overall. Other documents that might interest the uh, audience members for this are USAID's technical briefs, which are also available on Global Waters. These documents try to distill existing knowledge from various WASH subsectors. It's kind of like cutting edge, um, you know, implementation um, ed, uh, advice and best practices. So SWS research overall has certainly contributed significantly to the governance uh, and rural water as well as sanitation technical briefs. So uh, definitely check those out in addition to our research agenda, which, um, you know, still kind of um, illustrates the open questions, the open the questions that still need to need, need answers. I think um, so. We're we're always trying to push the envelope on that. And finally, I just wanted to thank the entire team that contributed to this work. Um, SWS has been pretty strategic in terms of working alongside existing projects and partners with a lot of competing priorities. So I really appreciate uh, everyone's willingness to participate in this research and. I wanted to also thank the researchers that you heard from today for crafting a set of questions that, and activities that are directly relevant to a broad set of implementers and also focused on getting results. So, and then finally, thanks to you all, thanks to you all for joining today. Um, again, connect with us on globalwaters.org to stay in touch. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Have a good evening or a good day, depending on your time zone. So thanks everyone.